Don't get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. I mean, I've been hearing about this, but I, I really. Okay, let me just put it out there. What the fuck is going on in Ohio? Shout out to my Ohio tea sippers. Are y'all's cats and dogs being eaten by Haitians? What is the tea? Because I woke up maybe like over the weekend. I got like a, a newsletter from the Blaze Network. And they're like, Haitians is out here eating people's cats and dogs. I said, Haitians, 20,000 of them eating cats and dogs. What? I didn't understand what, I'm like, were these the Haitians that were down at the border like a year ago? Remember when all them Haitians came up from, they was just walking through Mexico and shit, and now all of a sudden there was 20,000 Haitians, they were all at the border, and then remember within a week, they were gone. I'm like, where the hell did all these Haitian, the Haitians go? They were gone like within a week. And I kept asking, I said, well, where did they go? They done walked up here from Mexico, how do 20,000 people just disappear? Well, come to find out, I guess they're all in Ohio. All the Haitians have now went from Mexico to Ohio. Well, how did they get up there? So they're up there in Ohio, and people are out here on social media crying. They're having town halls. They're saying that their cats and dogs are being eaten by Haitians. I'm like, what in the hoodoo voodoo is going on here? What? So what was crazy is that Trump ended up speaking on this, and a lot of people were upset. And the thing is, I didn't even know why he brought it up because you don't even know if these are real claims. And in, unless you're like involved in TikTok or social media, this was a television debate, right? So who watches TV? The old folks, the boomers. Boomers are not really on social media like that. Not saying they don't have YouTube and Instagram, but let's keep it real. You see Boomer Shannon Sharp done, you know, leaked himself fucking, okay? Boomers are not that social media savvy, so they're not seeing all the tea that's happening on TikTok. So when he gets up there and he talks about Haitians eating cats, people are confused and they're like, what are you talking about? So um, we're going to watch these news clips of that's going on. I'm, I'm going to show you a few clips. Again, I, I don't know what to believe at this point in time. Shout out to my Haitians, okay? I see my Zoes in there. I see the flags. Shout out to y'all. We're going to get to the bottom of this shit, okay? Um... Now, let me keep it real. You know, I didn't grow up with a lot of Haitians. I, I grew up in the Midwest. But I remember a long time ago, um, I think Trina, she got a lot of backlash because she had said she was talking about one of the other Haitian girls on Love and Hip Hop Miami. And she was like cussing them out and was like, y'all be eating cats and stuff. And I had never heard that about Haitians. And I remember Funky Dineva did a video and he was saying that when they were younger, that that was the stereotype for Haitians in Miami. Again, I don't know because I didn't grow up in, you know, around, there's not like a Haitian community up here. You know, I met a few Haitians up there, but it's not a lot. It's mainly Somalians, okay? So he was saying that back in the day when they were growing up, um, that was what was tied to Haitians is that they, they ate dogs and cats or stuff like that. And so a lot of people, like a lot of like the African-Americans in Miami would clown Haitians and call them cat eaters. And that's what Trina did, which was totally wrong. So he was kind of addressing that, you know, as you get mature, you know, you get better. Now I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. I grew up in the Midwest. So the people up here who ate cats and dogs, they weren't the Haitians, it was the Asians. Now I don't know if that's just a Minnesota thing, but them Vietnamese kids was always accused of eating people's cats and dogs. Not saying that they did, cause I had a really cool Vietnamese friend, Kong, shout out to you. But I remember that was one thing that people would say to him. They'd be like, Kong be eating cats and dogs. <laughs> this is so stupid. I feel like I'm in, <laughs> I feel like I'm back in third grade, child, on the playground. Kong be eating cats and dogs and shit. So, and then I remember one time my, my eighth grade teacher, my social studies teacher, she was really cool. But she was one of the white ladies, like, now that I look at it, she's probably like more liberal, you know, whatever. So she was telling us a story that when she went to Vietnam to go visit, um, she ate a dog with her host family or something. So, you know, us being kids, we're like, oh, you ate a dog. So we started, you know, everybody, the whole class was clowning her. So for the whole week, they started calling her dog eater. You know, because she said she ate a dog. You know, when you're in people's countries, you don't, you know, deny food. You just, you know, you follow along with the culture. So we was like, oh, Mrs. Kranz is a dog eater. She's a dog eater. 
this lady started crying, y'all. By the time Friday hit, she broke down crying in the middle of class and was like, y'all stop, stop calling me a dog eater. People around school are thinking I just eat dogs just to be eating dogs. Like she, I remember she had like an emotional breakdown. So we finally just stopped calling her dog eater and we left it alone. So I haven't heard this, when I tell you since like elementary school, junior high, you, I don't know anybody who's being accused in 2024 of eating dogs. So I'm sitting here like, well, what is, what year is this? This is like 90s tea when we want to accuse Asians and I guess Haitians of eating cats and dogs. Well, now it's coming back in 2024. So, <laughs> I really feel like I'm back in St. Paul, child. Again, these were, you know, xenophobic rumors. Of course, our Asian people do not eat cats and dogs. But that was what was said growing up. So, you know, when you would see, you know, an Asian person with a pet, <laughs> you do it like, <laughs> like, damn, poor Fido. You know what I mean? That was because, you know, that shit's ingrained in you. would be like, oh, you got a dog? Oh, okay. <laughs> Society ain't shit, child. So, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and listen. Um, y'all laughing at my story time. Y'all love my story time. Um... Y'all know, I have no chill. If you're offended, move around, okay? I will just speak how I speak. I apologize if you're offended. I'm not saying that y'all are eating dogs. I'm telling you how we grew up in the hood. These were the rumors that were spread around about the Vietnamese kids. I had Vietnamese friends. For what I knew and saw, they didn't eat no dogs. They didn't eat no cats. They ate regular food, rice, chicken. You know what I mean? I would go over there and eat their food. So I'm just saying. Even they said the Cambodians. Y'all ain't, you know, they said the Cambodians was out here eating dogs too. I got a lot of Cambodian homies. Never seen them eat no dogs and cats, okay? So, let me go ahead. We're going to play this clip, uh, some news clips here. Because I, I don't know what's going on in Ohio. You got bitches crying on TikTok, screaming and hollering. So, I, I don't know. They said J.D. Vance started the rumor. Okay, we're going to watch. I got a few videos. We're going to kind of siphon through them and see. What is the tea? Are the Haitians out here eating people's pets? Okay, and we all went through that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know I'm Nigerian. I was called African booty scratcher. I don't be scratching nobody's ass, bitch. Okay, so, you know, we all went through it. This is not to make fun of anybody. I was clowned and made fun of, you know, for being African. You know, shout out to all the Africans. We all heard it. We were picked on. You know, people talk shit about us. So, you know, we got it too. You know what I mean? It, it is what it is. If you're upset, move around. Shit. You know, the 90s, they wasn't no, uh, they didn't give a fuck in the 90s. Bitches will hurt your feelings, talk about your mama, talk about your culture. That's why we had tough skin now. It's this Gen Z, y'all cry about everything. If you grew up, when we grew up, you had to learn to fight. You had to learn to roast. You had to learn to, you know what I'm saying, pop back, talk your shit. Oh, I'm an African booty scratcher. Let me beat your ass. Where's my spare? Okay? So that's just how we, we wrote with the punches. So it's not, nobody should be in the comment section crying. Thank you. Somebody said, uh, Diane, Di Diana Diego said the Mexicans too. Uh-huh, they used to make fun of Mexicans, call them wet bags. But, oh, you just snuck in from over the border. You know, so we all dealt with our xenophobic remarks. But I feel like if you grew up in the 90s, it made you stronger. You know what I'm saying? It made you stronger. It taught a lot of us how to fight, actually. You go call me African booty scratcher one more time, I'm about to whoop your ass. A lot of fights. Popped off on the school bus behind them words, okay? Yeah, uh, roasting, somebody said roasting is a lot, is a lost recess art. Yes, people will roast you. Your mama's so short that when she sit on the curve, her feet dangle. Your mama's so fat, she sit on both sides of the movie theater. Oh, I still got some roasting from back in the day, honey, okay? They be like, oh, when, when, uh, when they say stuff like Mexicans, like, oh, don't, don't have me call immigration. You know what I mean? Like people, like, that's just what it was. Even if you go back and I was watching uh, Poetic Justice the other day. And I remember, I forgot all about this thing because I haven't seen it in years. Remember that part in the mail room when the Mexican dude, I forget his name, and Tupac, they were going back and forth. He was talking about black people. Tupac was talking about Mexicans. That is how it was when we were growing up. And it was all in love. We made fun of each other's cultures, ethnicities, but it was all in love. I'm like, that couldn't even be put in a movie today because motherfuckers are so sensitive. They'll be crying and talking about racism and all this stupid shit. But go back and watch Poetic Justice and see how Tupac and that Mexican dude was roasting each other. It's funny. Uh, so let me see here. Yeah, we had roast battles. I was, shit, I was clonked all the damn time being African. 
All right, so let's listen to what the people have to say about these these animals and what is going on in Ohio. Let me know if it echoes or anything. Last night's presidential debate in Philadelphia, a comment made by former President Donald Trump right now is stirring up some controversy. That's right. He says that certain Haitian immigrants have been accused of stealing people's pets and eating them in Springfield, Ohio. Well, these are claims that are baseless. And 11 Lives Joe Ripley, he went to the community here in Atlanta, spoke with some local Haitians about how they're being affected by this. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. Former President Donald Trump doubling down on false claims made during Tuesday's presidential debate. His campaign says Haitian migrants in Springfield, Ohio, have reportedly hunted geese and other livestock and kidnapped residents' pets and ate them. A city spokesperson called the claims rumors. City police said there was no credible evidence that ever happened. Where does he get this information? We spoke with a Haitian restaurant owner in the Grant Park neighborhood of Atlanta who did not want to be identified in response to the former president's comments. I never see that. I never witnessed something like that. Definitely this is going to hurt Haitian people, that's for sure. That's for sure. According to the Atlanta Regional Commission, there are over 25,000 Haitians that have made Metro Atlanta their home. The Trump campaign sent us a response saying the influx of immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, has strained the housing, health care, and education systems in the area. In that statement, the campaign said, quote, President Trump will continue talking about how we are going to keep communities like this safe from migrant crime and make America safe again. In Atlanta, Joe Ripley, 11 Alive News. All right. I don't know what sis was cooking in that pot, bitch, with that. It looked good now. It didn't look like no paws or nothing. It looked like chicken, chicken thighs and legs. Um, so now somebody said that the Mexican man in Port of Justice was Rene Elizondo, Janet Jackson's husband. I never realized that. Looking back, I'm like, he do look familiar. So I didn't know that was Janet Jackson's husband that played that. And I remember that um, soft gift, gifted Candace, when he was like, get the zip codes right, essay. You can't even say essay now without people getting offended. I got cussed out one day for using the word essay. That's racist for you to call us essays. I didn't call you essay. I said, why doesn't Takashi 6 9 hire essays to be his security guard instead of damn black men? And people got offended by that. But um, so they're saying, I, I don't feel like at this point, unless he has like proof, proof, I think being that he's running for the president, Trump should not have mentioned the whole dogs and cats things with the Haitians. You know what I mean? I don't think that that was cool. So again, I'm not sure what's going on, but there is a lady on TikTok. She's having a mental breakdown. Everybody's trying to figure out what the hell is going on in Ohio. So we're going to watch this lady. She's saying that the Haitians are eating cats and dogs. I don't know. White folks are saying this. Black folks are saying this. I have yet to see anybody show a picture of Fido and be like, you know, this was Fido before and this is Fido in the pot. Like, I, I don't I don't get it. But we're going to go ahead and watch her reaction, child. She's very extra. This shit ain't no joke. It's not funny. I really do not feel fucking safe here, bro. Like, everyone on TikTok, on Facebook, making these jokes to get everything fucking funny. Like, imagine you being homeless for a whole fucking year for no fucking reason. Like, what the fuck? This shit is not fun. This shit is not cool, bro. They really out here decapitating animals and y'all are making jokes out of it. Imagine if you went outside and you saw your motherfucking, you saw your dog's head decapitated on the fucking ground. Like, are you, dude, why, why are y'all thinking this shit's a joke? It's not a joke. I don't feel comfortable walking anywhere. Like, what the fuck? I should be able to feel safe in my own city. Everybody's fucking homeless out here. Ain't shit but fucking scary ass Haitians just lurking and creeping and shit. Y'all thinking this shit's motherfucking funny. Like, keep making this shit up. It's not made up, bro. This shit is real life. This shit is really affecting me. Like, what the fuck? This shit ain't no joke. It's not funny. I really do not feel fucking... Okay, I'm gonna need her to go get therapy. It is not. And then she's zooming in and shit every two seconds, trying to make it more dramatic. Girl, get your ass out of here with that. There's a bunch of scary Haitians and they're decapitating pets. And I'm homeless. <laughs> like, I don't... Like, what... What is, again, what is going on in Ohio? You got this bad shit crazy girl screaming and crying like a banshee. You got Trump accusing Haitians of eating cats and dogs. But, I mean, this has been going on for, like, the past week. I didn't expect for him to say it. I don't know what, like, 
Does anybody have proof at this point? It's fight on a pot. <laughs> it's Bella in a pot. Like, what is going on? So I, I don't know, but they're saying that it's in Springfield, Ohio. Let me see. There's another clip. Okay. Let's, let's watch a little. We're not going to watch the whole thing. We're going to watch a little bit of this clip here. We're going to move on to the next topic. I just want to know what the hell's going on. Let's see what they talk about. Claims that Haitian migrants in Springfield are, quote, draining social services and causing chaos. He's also repeated a baseless rumor, already debunked by city officials, about pets being abducted and eaten, a story amplified by right wing media and Elon Musk online. Not over the last fine. four years, Springfield has seen its small population grow by over 20 percent, driven almost entirely by immigrants. William Brangham recently went to Springfield to understand how the city is coping. The sounds of Haitian Creole carrying across soccer fields, in grocery stores, in restaurants, dishing up the popular Haitian street food, pate kode. It's striking hearing all this in the heartland of the United States, Springfield, Ohio. Springfield's a small blue collar city with a familiar story. Much of the factory work left decades ago and the residents followed. A community of more than 80,000 emptied out to less than 60. That is, until the last few years. Our churches, we see new people. In the pews? Yes, absolutely. Wes Babian was the pastor at First Baptist Church for almost 20 years. For years we've okay, walked. Are they eating cats and dogs? We don't need to know nothing about this church. Let me try and fast forward because I don't. I, I need to know like where's the receipts? Y'all not deal with receipts. The reason they left is their home country is disintegrating. Protests and increasing violence in the Caribbean nation culminated in the assassination of President Jovenel Moise in 2021. Since then, the country spiraled. Arms are here now. The infrastructure of the city, our safety forces, our hospitals, our schools. Springfield is a close community and has a big heart. But at the same point, we've had this influx that has taxed all these services. The number of students needing English language help has quadrupled in five years. Translators at the local health center cost hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And last year was the busiest year on record for the fire department. But it seemed that for the community at large, the increase in immigration and its stresses largely flew under the radar. A lot of that changed last August. It was the very first day of school and a school bus full of kids was coming down this road. A driver coming in the other direction came around that bend, said he was blinded by the sun. He clipped the bus and the bus ended up in this ditch. We begin with breaking news. Right now, multiple law enforcement agencies are on the scene of a deadly school bus crash. Does uh, that's sad. They're just talking at this point. Um, I think what's going on, to be real with you, is I think what happened is you had all the illegal Haitians that came in through the border over a year ago. Somehow they were bussed and sent to different places up north, Midwest. I guess a lot of them ended up in Springfield, Ohio. In any city, when you have an influx of people, it's going to put a strain on the services. We see what's going on in Chicago. We see what's happening in New York, you know, with them busing illegal migrants up there. It is going to put a strain on the services. And I think the problem is because there's a strain on the services, the healthcare services, the school services, things like that to help this bigger influx of Haitian immigrants. I think what's happening is we have a serious case of xenophobia. And what better way to push even more xenophobia, especially in a town that's mainly, you know, was mainly a white town, than to say your, your pets are being taken and eaten and decapitated. Now, I'm not saying that this didn't happen or maybe one person, you know, didn't, you know, steal somebody's puppy and make a stew out of it. I'm not saying that it didn't happen, but I don't think it's happening at the rate that they're saying that. It's fear-mongering and, prop and propaganda. And it's another case of divide and conquer. These are the newest people in town. It's their fault that the services are, are strapped. It's their fault that, you know, they're replacing us. You know, there's not enough jobs. 
you know, it's kind of like the same old song and dance anytime you have a new group of immigrants coming into a situation. And I think that's what's happening. And um, it is unfortunate because it's gonna ca it's causing a huge divide on social media. You know, I've seen the comments on TikTok. People are being very disrespectful. People are accusing, you know, all Haitians of eating cats and dogs when we know that's not the case. You know, just like I said, when people made rumors about Asian people, does that mean just because a, a section of the Asian population may eat dogs in China or whatever, that doesn't mean everybody's eating dogs and cats. So I think this is what that is. They're trying to find a way, you know, to blame this population because the people who are originally there, they're not able to get certain services. So I think, I think that was a bad look for Trump, for him to speak on it in absolutes and say that. It comes off as very xenophobic. And what he needs to realize, if he wants to win, you're going to need those legal Haitian immigrants who can vote. You're going to want their votes. And so now you just offended a, a big population of the people by saying that. That's why Kamala Harris was like, she was giddy as hell when that came out of his mouth. You know, because she's like, yep, he done fucked up now. Because now the media is running with that. See, before that was just TikTok fodder. It was TikTok conversation. But the former president has brought it now to a national stage. And from what I've been seeing, the police officers are saying that they've been, you know, reaching out, doing investigations, and they're not seeing this. The only thing we're seeing is people on Instagram and TikTok making videos, crying, talking about Fido's in a pot. You know what I'm saying? So, again, until y'all show me before and after pictures of Fido <laughs> in the yard versus in the pot, I'm not buying any of this shit, okay? So I do think that it is very, you know, xenophobic what's going on right now, and it's going to cause an even, a even bigger divide. Somebody said they made a song about it on TikTok. <laughs> Fight on the stew is wild. I ain't heard the song yet. What is it called? Fight on the stew? Do I need to trademark that? Somebody said it's giving paid actors. It really is. It really is. Let me let's go on TikTok and see if I can find the what is the song called on TikTok? Only TikTok would have a song about Haitian people potentially eating cats and dogs. I'm gonna Google and see if it come up. And then they said Elon Musk was also a fan in the flames. Oh, that's something else. Press recent rumors of an insurgent. Oh, that was the Springfield uh, mayor. All right, let's see what he has to say real quick. And then we're going to switch on to a different subject. I ain't got time for this. I'm over it now. I'm not even a pet person. All right, let's see what he has to say. Related, related to our Haitian community. We wish to clarify that we uh, have not been able to verify any credible reports or specific claims of pets being harmed, injured, or abused by individuals within the immigrant community. Let me be totally honest, okay? If you are a person in my life that I deal with, family, I don't I'm care not who watching you are. To somebody. I'm not listening to a lemon with eyes and lips. Next. The damn mayor said that ain't nobody's cats and dogs ended up in no stew. So we're gonna leave it at that. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> she looked like a, an annoying lemon. Okay, y'all remember annoying orange? I'm not listening to annoying lemon. Okay, next. Um, so yeah, that's about it for that. Um, yeah, it's this is sad that the rumors are just going around like that. if you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.